Hey guys, this is Mr. Grace for Algebra 2 Unit 4.7, 4.11 Review. Remember to show every step. So it's asking us to graph the following parabolas, write the vertex, axis symmetry, and y-intercept before graphing. Now, if you look at number one, it is in vertex, it is not in vertex form, it's in standard form. So to get the vertex, I can either put it into vertex form, or we can use the equation x equals the opposite of b over 2 times a, okay? And that'll help us find the axis of symmetry, and then we plug in to find the vertex, okay? So remember what a, b, and c are. So if I'm doing the opposite of B, it's a positive 4. I would plug in negative 4 divided by 2 times 1. Okay? So on the top, you get negative 4. 2 times 1 is 2. And negative 4 divided by 2 is a negative 2. Now... If you want to come right here, that's your axis of symmetry, x equals negative 2. And since I know that that's my axis of symmetry, I can just come right here and draw it in right away to get it, to get it done. Okay? So now that I know what my x value is, I would come back and plug in negative 2 to all of these. Everywhere that there's an x, I'm going to add a negative 2. Okay, you can either plug it into your calculator or you can do it yourself. Negative 2 squared is 4, plus 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8, minus 5, and then once we're done with all that, we get negative 2, um, should be negative 9. Okay, and it's always good to double check with your calculator. Negative 2 squared, um, sorry, that's plus 4, times negative 2, minus 5. Oh, wrong button. Come on. Are we going to get to where I need to go? There we go. And we get negative 9. Okay, so my vertex is negative 2, negative 9. Now, to get our y-intercept, we can either plug it in, or another way to get the y-intercept is by plugging in 0. So g of 0 equals 0 squared, <coughs> excuse me, plus 4 times 0 minus 5. And we get g of 0 equals negative 5. So 0, negative 5. Now, as I get ready to graph it, remember we need the A value to know what our pattern is. Okay, and since A is 1, I'm going to come down here and write that A equals 1. My vertex is negative 2, negative 9. If I'm following my pattern, I go up 1 over 1 and 2, 4 over 2. Okay? And if you look, my y-intercept is at, yeah, 0, 5. Sorry, 0, negative 5. Just like it said it would. Alright, number 2. The vertex? Well, this is in vertex form, so I can take the opposite and the 9 stays the same, okay? So my vertex is at 7, 9. Um, my axis of symmetry is x equals 7, because that's my x value. So I like to draw my vertex in right away. Or sorry, I could draw the vertex in right away, but I like to draw the axis of symmetry. And let's just do the vertex anyway. So it's at 7, Nine. Okay. Um, now, when we're finding the y-intercept, 
it's a little bit different here because we actually need to plug in zero. And it's a little bit more work because zero minus seven is negative seven. Negative seven squared is 49. Negative two times 49 is negative 98. And then we get our final answer of negative 89. Okay, so it's not just whatever this outside guy is. No, it's a lot more work than that. Okay, so our y-intercept is zero, negative 89. Okay, so now to graph, I need my a value outside for my pattern, and that's a equals negative two. So I already did my first point, but I need to go down two over one and then down eight over two. So two, four, six, eight over two. And there we go. Make sure to add your arrows. All right, so number three is just like number one. Okay, here's our A, our B, our C. And if you look at it, A, equals one. Okay, so that'll help you graph it, but you guys are on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and good luck. Okay, so there's all of my work. Opposite of B over two times A and we get three. Plug in three and we got three. So my vertex is three, three which means my axis of symmetry is at x equals 3. And then when you plug in 0, you get 12. a was 1, so it's a positive 1, and that's our pattern. Up 1 over 1, up 4 over 2. All right, so for the next part, they want us to use completing the square to rewrite the quadratic equation into vertex form. So when we're doing completing the square, I care about the B value because what we're doing is we take the B, negative eight divided by two and we square it. So negative eight divided by two is four and four squared is 16. So as we rewrite this, we say X squared minus eight X and then we make a little room right here and then we do plus 17, and then we have a little room in the back, okay? And we add that, so we have the plus 16 and the minus 16 to balance our equation out. Now over here, we need to factor what's inside the parentheses, okay? So I'm looking for numbers that multiply to get to 16 and add to get to negative eight and that's going to be negative 4 and negative 4. So off to the side here, okay, I'm going to show some little side work. I'm going to factor that. Okay, the x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. The first group I'm going to factor out an x. And then we get x minus four. And in the back over here, since my leading coefficient is negative, my GCF is negative. So we get x minus four. So we have x minus four and x minus four. So as we're writing this, we would have f of x equals x minus four times x minus four and then I have 17 minus six, which is a one. And now we would just write that x minus four squared plus one. And there's our final answer, okay? Now that's showing all the work with all the factoring, but we've talked about the shortcut, okay? Ready for the shortcut? We still need to do 
the b squared. So 6, sorry, divided by 2 squared. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So my setup is still the same. So x squared plus 6x. Put in my break. There's my minus. And then I'm going to have my plus. So I have plus 9 minus 9. OK. I still want to know what numbers multiply to get to 9 and add to get to 6. And that is 3 and 3. So if you look at what we did yes over here, it broke down to negative 4 and negative 4, and we had negative 4 and negative 4. That's how it that factors out. It will factor to x plus 3 and x plus 3. And then I'm just going to do the outside, negative 7 minus 9, which is negative 16. And then I can write x plus 3 squared minus 16 to get to my final answer. OK, put a box around it and square it. All right, last question for this video is number six. So we have an object is thrown upward from a building, the height in feet h of the object in t seconds after it's thrown is given by the quadratic equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 40t plus 56. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is to sketch a picture of this. So we have a building. There we go, it's got some windows on it. Okay, and so they say that an object, so someone's up here and they threw an object and it goes, whew, crash. Okay, so that's my sketch of what happened. Now, identify the starting height of the object and the velocity at which it's thrown, okay? Now, the nice thing is inside, when it's talking about velocity, this is the velocity right here, okay? So right away, we can say that the velocity equals 40 feet per second, okay? We need to have both variables there. It's 40 feet per second, okay? So the only thing that we need to find now is we need to find out what the starting height was. Now, if we, we're looking for the height, that means they told us the time, and the starting height is when zero time is passed. So we get the height equals negative 16t squared plus 40t plus 56. So I'm plugging in zero. 40 times 0 is 0, 0 squared times negative 16 is 0. So we get our height is 56 feet. All right, C. How long will it take for the object to reach its maximum height, and what is the maximum height? Well, what they're talking about is the vertex, okay? So to find the vertex, I have to take the opposite of B. So looking at your equation, B was 40. So I take the opposite of B over negative 16, I'm sorry, 2 times negative 16. Okay, and all I'm doing is I'm using that equation, the negative 16t squared, plus 40t plus 56 because we've got our a, b, and c. So on the top we have negative 40. 2 times negative 16 is a negative 32. And when we divide that out, sorry, negative 40 divided by negative 32, we get 1.25. So 1.25 
that's our x value, so those are the seconds. Now we want to find out, well, what was it? What was the height? So if we're finding the height, that means I have to go back and plug in the 1.25 into the equation. So for that, I'm going to use my calculator. We have negative 16 times 1.25 squared plus 40 times 1.25 plus 56. And then we get our um, the maximum height of 81 feet. All right, D. How long did it take for the object to hit the ground? So once again, we need to look at our height and look at our time. They're saying how long, so I don't know what the time is, but I should know what the height is because they told me that it's the ground, and the ground is a height of zero. So what we do is we set the equation equal to zero, so negative 16t squared plus 40t plus 56, okay? And then to solve this, we're going to factor. Now, the first thing, we got to take out the GCF. If you don't know what the GCF of 16, 40, and 56, you're coming over here and you're writing all 1 and 18, 2 and 8, 4 and 4, 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, 5 and 8. 56 off the top of my head, 1 and 56, 2 and 28, 3, no, 4, does 50, 4 go into 56? I think it does. Yep, 4 and 14, 5, no, 6, no, 7 and 8. Okay, so that's how we find out what the GCF is, and it's a negative 8. So the negative 8 comes out front, so we have 0 equals, and then we get 2t squared minus 5t minus 7. And then I'm going to factor this. I want numbers that multiply to get to negative 14 and add to get to negative 5. And it's going to be 2 and negative 7. Remember to check that it works for both. Okay, I'll really zoom in here so you can see this work. So I, since I'm writing so small, I have to factor that. So we have 2t squared plus 2t minus 7t minus 7. And then from the first group, I have to factor out the GCF, which is a 2t. And that turns into t plus 1. Factor out the negative 7, and we get t plus 1. We did it right because these match. So we have t plus 1 and 2t minus 7. So over here, that's what I plug in. Negative 8, uh, t plus 1. 2t minus 7. And to solve this, everything with the t, with the variable, I have to set equal to 0. On the right side, I would subtract 1 to both sides. And on the left, or the left side, I subtracted 1. And on the right side, I add 7 and divide by 2. Now, we're talking about time. How much time to pass? Well, we, ha we can't have negative time, so that one doesn't work. So my t equals 7 over 2, and the only thing that I'm going to say is just divide that out so you know that that is talking about 3.5 seconds. Okay?
All right, guys, well, that is the first side of the review. If you have any questions, please come see Ms. Kranz or myself. We would love to help you out. Otherwise, this is Mr. Grace signing off. Thanks for watching.